From KARK4 and Fox 16, this is a special report. Here's Mitch McCoy. Hello, good afternoon to you from Studio B here in Little Rock. You're taking a live look right now at the Arkansas State Capitol. We are at any moment from now going to be getting an update from Governor Asa Hutchinson uh, regarding COVID-19 and what is happening with the coronavirus, uh, specifically the Omicron variant. We all know cases are uh, surging across the state. It has been somewhat of a roller coaster, one could argue with uh, active cases dropping a little bit, then uh, exploding. Right now, there is nearly 100,000 active cases of COVID-19 in our state. Specifically, we have 97,629. Um, we saw uh, an increase again in hospitalizations. We saw 16 additional hospitalization, or excuse me, 40 additional hospitalizations yesterday, bringing us to a total of 1,640. So uh, we have already seen a record number of hospitalizations that was broken uh, earlier in the week. And, you know, based off of the trend and the data, it would suggest that hospitalizations will increase yet again today. Uh, and so that's what we're going to wait for Governor Asa Hutchinson to deliver us the update. It will be interesting to get his take on uh, the number of active cases. It is very um, possible that we will approach and exceed 100,000 active COVID cases in the state of Arkansas today. Uh, based off of trends, based off of the data, there were 11,000 new cases yesterday. So if the data continues to, to show that trend, it will be interesting to see if we exceed that 100,000 active case mark. Um, in terms of the uh, active cases, if, if that's the case, that will be the largest number of active cases ever of COVID in the state. Um, it, it will really be a symbolic day um, and, and somewhat of a historic day in the fight against the coronavirus. And uh, also hospitalizations with there being that startling um, 1,600 COVID, uh, 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 1,600 hospitalizations. Um, you know, trends are showing uh, uh, an increase again in that. So um, it will be interesting to see as we see Governor Asa Hutchinson here now walking into the briefing room, followed by Health Secretary Dr. Jose Romero. And it looks like we have um, some representatives from the Ed Department of Education. Let's go ahead and listen into Governor Asa Hutchinson as uh, he gives an update on Thank COVID for, again. Uh, the big thing to watch me, uh, will be do we for, exceed 100,000? Uh, unusual cases? Friday version of the uh, weekly update. Uh, and I first want to introduce uh, Dr. Jose Romero, Secretary of the Department of Education. I'm joined by Dr. Ivy Pfeffer, uh, who is a Deputy Secretary at the uh, Department of Education, talk about our schools. And then today I'm pleased to be joined by the President of the Baptist Health Center, uh, Greg Crane, who will provide an update on our hospitalization status and uh, leading into that, uh, I wanted to start off by, before we go to the cases uh, specifically, uh, we will see that the active cases in Arkansas uh, have increased by over 15,000 since last week, and to now we have over 100,000 active cases that are reportable here in this state. Uh, this means that over 3% of the population is currently an active case as reported uh, to the Department of Health. Uh, secondly, our hospitalizations have increased by 349 uh, to record level of 1,658. Now, let me pause here and just say that I'm very proud of the hospital workers. I'm very proud of our education uh, uh, team and our schools because they're managing through this very effectively. You will see that because of the steps that we have taken uh, to increase hospital capacity, the steps that have been taken to provide at-home tests, uh, the steps that uh, are taken to be flexible uh, in terms of the uh, contact tracing, uh, it's allowing uh, the schools to uh, continue. And you'll see that uh, those that have shifted to virtual have decreased. Uh, our hospital capacity is still there despite uh, the high number of hospitalizations that we see. And so uh, with where we are right now in this pandemic and with the Omicron variant, uh, we do believe we're managing our way through it. 
Uh, we're responding to the needs that are out there and that uh, we're hopeful that uh, we'll see uh, these cases go down first. And of course, even after the cases start going down or decreasing in numbers, then you're still gonna have hospitalizations are there as a lagging indicator in deaths. We have still a lot uh, to do here, a lot more to go through, but uh, we have positioned ourselves uh, in the best way possible uh, to get through this. And with that, uh, let me go to the uh, case update today. You'll see that we have an uh, increase of 13,000 cases, uh, which uh, brings our total case to 726,000 active cases, as I said, are up 3,500. Very sadly, uh, we've had 14 additional Arkansans that have passed away as a result of COVID, and you'll see the uh, data later as to what percent of the new cases, what percent of the hospitalizations and the deaths uh, represent those that have not been vaccinated. Next, uh, our doses given remains a concern to me. I just think the confusing messages that we've seen nationally, the debate online, uh, you know, we're slowing down the progress that we've made uh, on uh, our vaccination program with 5,000 uh, being given at really uh, the height of the pandemic, uh, we would like to see that number obviously much higher. We are making progress, but it is very incremental. It is slow, and, uh, and, and the fact is that uh, Arkansas reflects much of the nation that there is some hardened resistance uh, to going beyond where we are in our percent vaccinated. Uh, you can see that we have 1.5 million now that are fully immunized, well over 50% of our state. Uh, next, uh, hospital data. Uh, we have an increase of 18 hospitalized and eight additional on ventilators. Uh, and this, with the height of the cases, but the much slower increase in hospitalization reflects the fact that the Omicron variant is not as severe in consequences and hospitalizations as the Delta variant. And that gives us a little bit more margin to work with. Uh, next, uh, testing. Uh, we know there's a lot more testing going on with our uh, at-home free tests that are being distributed across the state. But still with that, we've had 15,000 PCR and antigen tests that have been reported to the Department of Health. Highest counties, Pulaski 1,000, Benton, Washington 800 and 700 respectfully, respectively, let's go on. And this is one I wanted to spend some time on, which is just really an update on our investment for hospital capacity. As you know, I asked the legislature and the legislature supported $50 million in additional hospital bed space here in this state. And so, uh, you can see the first line is Arkansas Children's Hospital. Uh, we were paying for an additional six ICU beds and then four COVID medical beds you'll see over there. Uh, this slide was prepared uh, yesterday and we've been informed that Children's Hospital do have all of those beds open. And so uh, we know that uh, the ICU beds have been open and the med surge beds as well. And you can see each one of the different hospitals and how uh, they committed to expanding ICU and, and uh, other uh, med surge uh, beds that would be available for COVID patients. At the very bottom line, you can see 97 additional ICU beds, about 43 have been opened. And so that's about uh, 54, I believe it is, uh, that remain to be opened. So we do have additional capacity that will be coming online for ICU beds as well as the COVID uh, beds as well. It's about a 70 uh, margin there. And so we'll have more beds coming online and this uh, gives us some uh, additional capacity as we enter into the coming weeks. And then this just uh, shows the at-home tests that we've uh, made available. Uh, we ordered 1.5 million uh, at-home tests to be distributed in our local health units, our libraries, that those 1.5 million tests have all been received and distributed uh, across the state. And we still have 370,000 that's uh, available at our local health units. 
Uh, the libraries uh, very well will have an inventory as well. And so that gives us a cushion for at-home test uh, in the coming uh, days and weeks until uh, our Kansans start receiving uh, from the federal s supply chain and the website, uh, they'll start receiving those that they can order. So this gets us there and this has helped us to uh, maximize our uh, hospital staff so they're not having to devote as much time to tests and it gives more people a alternative uh, to a PCR test that gives them quicker information. Uh, this is an important slide and uh, uh, I got to spend a little bit of time on it and what you see is first of all on the bottom is the dates. The first date is October 4, 2021. It goes the next week, the 18th, and then it goes to November. So you can see the timeline along the bottom. And then this uh, is the rate per 10,000. So it's a seven-day case rate of COVID cases by age group. And so on the, when you see all of the, the big spikes that you see, which is the Omicron variant, uh, that reflects the trend lines. Now what uh, Dr. Romero is happy about, and it's hard to keep Dr. Romero happy, but you can see uh, the one uh, that is the blue, which is the 19 to 24 year old. And the 19 to 24 year old blue line has started to go down. And uh, Dr. Romero can elaborate, but that is an early indicator that gives us hope that uh, the, the cases will start going down. That's probably the most vulnerable population and it was an early indicator later. And so uh, we'll see in the coming days, but uh, that one uh, data point of the trend line for that age group uh, is hopeful uh, that uh, we will peak in cases in the coming days or weeks. Uh, next, uh, this is a seven-day rolling average of cases and individuals hospitalized by day. And uh, you can see uh, here the, uh, on the left side is January of 2021. And then uh, you can see where we had the other peak in August of this year. That is under the Delta variant. So you can see the blue line of new cases. Uh, and then the yellow line are the hospitalizations. And you can see the distinction here that with the Delta, uh, you had our cases, uh, seven day rolling average of cases were very close to the line of hospitalizations. But under the Omicron, our hospitalizations are far less, of course, than the cases. Again, indicating that we have uh, not only greater hospital capacity now, but we also uh, have uh, the less severe Omicron variant that helps us to get through this. Uh, I always like to show uh, the percent that have been vaccinated. If you look at fully and partially vaccinated for all the eligible population in Arkansas, uh, you're looking at 67% of our population partially or fully vaccinated. And then the age group of 65 plus is 88.4% fully or partially vaccinated. And in that age group, the most vulnerable, of course, needs to get the booster shot, uh, needs to get the second shot, so that everyone will be fully vaccinated. Uh, this is the positivity uh, rate, and you can see that it's over 35% on the seven-day rolling average. That means it is uh, very serious in terms of the uh, spread in our community. And this, you know, is, is uh, something that changes week by week based upon the Omicron, certainly different than it was under Delta, but still under the new cases, 75% of the new infections in Arkansas represent those that are unvaccinated. 84% of the hospitalizations represent those that are unvaccinated, and then the uh, deaths, 84% of the deaths or those that are unvaccinated. Uh, with that, uh, I'll have some more comments, but I wanted to now uh, recognize uh, uh, Greg Crane, uh, president of the Arkansas uh, Baptist Health Center here to come and make his comments 
and then we'll follow it up uh, with uh, our education, and then Dr. Romero can come. Thank you, Governor. In preparing for this report out today, my emergency managers told me an amazing fact. Looking back over the past two years across the pandemic, one out of every four COVID-19 patients who are in a hospital in the state of Arkansas were being treated in a Baptist Health facility. My hospital, Baptist Health Medical Center in Little Rock, has consistently, over those years, had the highest number of patients admitted. I wish, I wish I could take you inside the walls of the clinics and hospitals to show you how hard the healthcare team's working and the compassion in the ministry provided. I'm honored to be counted one of them. Today is a new high watermark for my hospital. 138 patients are hospitalized with COVID. The previous high was 129. At last count, the Baptist Health System, we had 333 patients in a Baptist Health Hospital, a result of COVID-19. This is the highest number of COVID patients we've had since the pandemic began. 95 of those patients are in intensive care unit and 52 of those are on ventilators. I worry that the general public doesn't think that COVID is a threat to them that the Omicron variant is not a threat, but people get very, very sick. The majority of those in critical care are not vaccinated. Clearly, the vaccines provide protection. Please consider protecting yourself and protecting your family. As the governor said, patient volumes continue to increase. It's not just Baptist Health, but a community of healthcare providers that are coming together. St. Vincent's UMS, the Heart Hospital, Washington Regional, all working together to coordinate pa patient care across the state. In my opinion, the healthcare infrastructure would have been in very, very deep trouble if it wasn't for the governor, for the Arkansas Department of Health and Renee Mallory's team, and the state legislature, and the decisions they've made to help the healthcare community. Because of this support this week, we opened 63 additional beds at the Baptist Health Hospitals in Conway and Van Buren. 36 of those beds already have COVID-19 patients in them. I want to try to close with some encouraging news, or at least some encouraging signs. The Omicron surge has created the most critical staffing shortage among hospital staff we have seen during the entire pandemic. Healthcare providers, healthcare nurses, respiratory therapists, environmental service out of work because they were exposed and have to be isolated. But there is some good news in that just this week, we're fortunate to see staffing numbers begin to come back. We have gone from a peak of 584 employees in the Baptist Health System out, to earlier this week, 323, to yesterday, 259 employees out for reasons related to COVID. I'm also happy to report another good indicator is that the demand for testing has also declined this week. We have numerous testing sites across the state at Baptist Health facilities. Little Rock has by far the, the largest and the busiest. Recently, we have seen as many as 1,700 cars come through in a day. Yesterday, I'm happy to report that the number was down to 890, which is half of that earlier peak. Hopefully, these are some good signs of things to come. That concludes my report. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Um, for today's school report, um, I am pleased to be able to report that um, we have seen a much better week for schools in terms of the data. Um, last week, we had 108 districts that had to implement a district-wide modification, which meant um, that the impact of COVID-19 caused the district to have to close for all campuses. Um, this week, that number has gone down to 49 modifications district-wide of on-site instruction. And of that 49, a great number of those were due to weather-related issues that um, caused the district to have to close to on-site instruction. So we hope that is a um, positive sign for the future. 
We do know from talking with schools that um, they are now able to have more of their staff return. They have um, having fewer students who are having to be out. Um, that's not to minimize that there are still um, issues going on um, at more localized at um, individual campuses within schools and that does have an impact on students, on staff, on parents and the community. Um, but we are confident that um, the manner in which districts are making decisions and um, trying to minimize the impact of COVID in terms of learning, um, that, that the plans we have in place are working. Um, just to talk a little bit about how districts make those decisions. Um, everyday school administrators are balancing the need for student safety, and that includes being able to get students to school safely also keeping them safe while they're there, and also making sure that they can provide meaningful instruction, quality instruction um, for all kids. Um, on a day when that is not possible due to um, different factors, sometimes it's a weather, a power outage, utility issue that um, keeps a, a district from being able to open. Um, sometimes it is a um, disease or contagious outbreak like we've been dealing with with COVID. Um, whenever that occurs, Districts do have the option to implement an AMI day. And we know there's been a lot of um, questions about um, district plans for alternative methods of instruction. Um, we have um, districts that are having to implement um, AMI, sometimes at the district level, sometimes with just one or two buildings. We are monitoring that with our districts. We're having regular conversations with districts. And as districts start getting close to their maximum number of AMI days, we're gonna be working with them to help them think through what are the best ways that they can um, either um, look at um, um, having makeup days, um, providing additional instruction in order to minimize um, the loss of learning for students. Um, we also want to emphasize and help people understand that if there are days that meaningful instruction cannot occur, there um, are opportunities for districts to make up the day later. Every district has five days of makeup time built into their calendar already. And so um, there are times when districts may have to just take a pause and say, um, if we can't be open today, we're going to come back and address this day of learning at a later time and we'll be working with districts to see what that impact is as well. We've had a lot of people um, reach out and ask questions about things that they can do to help schools. And I would say that probably um, the main thing that we would ask is for um, um, parents and districts to communicate with each other, to talk about the challenges that are going on, to um, um, address the needs of students first, and also to understand that staff and um, teachers and support staff, they are fatigued and sometimes they are fe fearful. And we know and understand that and we want to help um, provide a little bit of confidence and hope that um, as districts are prioritizing their contact tracing efforts to make sure that they are providing a safe learning environment but being able to do that while providing quality instruction that we will be there to um, continue to monitor those needs and to respond in the, in the best way we can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, with regard to the uh, downward trend in the nine to 19 to 24 year old group, um, it is, uh, a positive sign that was the first group to go up um, and is starting to trend downward. We believe that we may begin to be seeing some downward trend in the number of cases. Uh, our overall projection, projection was that we should start to see a decrease next week um, and we hope this will continue. This does not mean that we're going to be out of the woods. We're still going to be having significant numbers of individuals being infected in the state. And as the graphs that, doc, that um, sorry, the governor showed, um, you know, while this may be a less severe infection on an individual basis, on a societal basis, this is a severe uh, outbreak of, of disease. It is uh, taxing our healthcare systems. We've been able to address that uh, to date um, and think we can 
do this going into the future. We still have a significant number of individuals in the 5 to 11 year old group that have not been vaccinated. Only 11.5 percent of that group have received full vaccination. We know that a single dose is not sufficient. That lags behind the national, the national average. Um, similarly, in the 12 to 18 year old group, we are not at the national average and have a significant number below uh, the level that need to be uh, immunized. Vaccines are available um, and uh, they are easily accessible. With regard to testing, um, we have distributed a significant number of the home, uh, at home uh, test kits. Um, that uh, may uh, in part uh, uh, explain why we're seeing less antigen testing uh, being reported. Um, it's not enough just to test, but you also have to adhere to the recommendations for quarantine if you do test positive. And remember that a single test that's negative early in the, in the disease does not mean you've not been infected. It could mean that you only don't have enough virus to detect, and it should be followed up in 24 to 48 hours, 48 hours, preferably with another test. Uh, tests still are available, as uh, the governor pointed out, in the local health uh, uh, units, um, and they are uh, accessible to all, all, all the public. Our public uh, um, partners uh, also have them uh, in uh, their um, uh, libraries and in agencies that interact with our, with our minority groups. Uh, so uh, the, please uh, avail yourselves of these tests. Um, I think that uh, we may be trending downward. Uh, in this in this spike, but we'll see what happens over the next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Romero. And with that, we'll take any questions. Uh, so, do you feel like with the measures you've taken to expand hospital capacity, that that's going to be enough, or do you think any other um, measures will be necessary to increase hospital capacity? There's not any guarantees. We're watching it very closely. Um, I'm hopeful that with the uh, extra capacity that we've built in that will be sufficient. We're going to be watching the cases in the coming week as well as the trend in hospitalizations and make a decision as to whether more has to be done. But at this point, we still have more coming online and uh, I'm uh, hopeful that it will be sufficient uh, over the next uh, week or so. If not, we will do more. The popularity of at home tests now. Are you worried at all that any downward trend in numbers might be a false hope because there's so many that we don't know now that might not be reported? Uh, no, because it, it, I think the big indicators are, are ones that you've seen. Uh, it's a good thing that our PCR testing at our hospital, uh, at least reported by uh, Baptist today has declined. That means that people are utilizing the at home test. So that's a success story. Uh, and then uh, even though we might not know about a positive case out there, we sure know about it if it leads to hospitalization. And then the other uh, trend line that you see is uh, some of the quarantines for staff shortages have been reduced, at least according uh, to the hospital uh, reported by Baptist today. And so I th those are some indicators as to where we are in this. Uh, there's some simple points that people uh, need to do. First of all, if you feel sick, stay at home. Don't go to work, don't go to school if you feel sick. Secondly, if you have symptoms and you believe you might have COVID, uh, get a test. Uh, you can pick these up at your local health unit. Uh, that's what we've ordered, 1.5 million of these. And uh, that will help guide you as to what you should do. Uh, and then if you uh, just because you might have traveled, you're curious as to whether uh, you've uh, been exposed or not, don't go to the emergency room. Uh, that's not the time to do it. Uh, get a test, uh, save our hospitals uh, the energy and the challenge they face if you simply go to uh, the uh, emergency room. And then finally, get vaccinated and get boosted up. And uh, if you're not in that capacity, uh, there's N95 masks that are going to be available through the federal government free of cost uh, at our pharmacies uh, down the road. Uh, that's uh, uh, one that will be here ho hopefully early February. But get boosted, get vaccinated. Do you track at all uh, any percentage of people that are self-reporting positives from at home of those cases? I see Dr. Romero nodding, but I don't know. Uh, you want to take that on, Dr. Romero?
So you are correct. Self-reporting uh, reporting is going on. Uh, but I can tell you that this is a very small number of individuals. So we do track that. But again, it's, it's not uh, in any significant number that are self-reporting at this time. So it really doesn't give us an idea of what's going on in the community. Are you worried about that being so low? No, no. I mean, it, you know, we're, we, we have shifted. We shifted early on in this particular spike. You know, our focus is not just the number of cases in the community. It's really the hospitalizations. That's probably, in this, in this case, the indicator of, of, of how much bad disease we have. Remember, as I said before, this is a mild or a less severe disease on an individual basis, but on a societal basis, this is a, this is a very significant, very severe infection because it's taxing our healthcare system. And that's what we're keeping an eye on. Is there any question remotely? Uh, Governor, uh, this is Andrew with AP. Um, I want to ask you about two things. Um, first of all, the Department of Human Services, uh, their request to the legislature this week uh, for approval of, of rules to be able to comply with the uh, federal vaccine uh, requirement for healthcare workers. Wanted to see, are you, are you confident that the legislature is, is going to approve that? And is there, if they don't, what steps would need to be taken or what, what would the consequences be? And a separate issue, going back to the, the at-home tests, are there any plans to order additional at-home tests beyond the 1.5 million yet? Uh, first on the, uh, the at-home test, uh, there's not any plan right now to order or more than the 1.5 million that we already have on hand. Uh, we have over 300,000 still in inventory in our communities available to pick up. We'll be watching it, but with the availability of uh, the White House's website and that you can order them free of cost, we think that's going to transition in that direction. So at this point, there's not any plan to uh, do more. Uh, in terms of the uh, DHS request to the legislature to allow uh, vaccinations to proceed or the requirement for our employees to be vaccinated, uh, I, from all indications, are that the legislature will favorably look at that, understanding uh, that, first of all, we fought it very hard. Uh, my administration opposed it in court. We believe it was, uh, it was going to be costly to the state in terms of our employees and providing good health care. Uh, we fought that, uh, but the courts upheld that, and so the choice is uh, do you lose uh, the access to the funding uh, that impacts uh, our health care system uh, or you do, do you put the vaccine requirement in place? And so we're asking for that permission for the legislature. All indications are that they will look at that favorably and I'm not going to speculate beyond that. Anything else? Yes, good afternoon, Governor. Brett Rains with 4029 News. We know you speak often with the White House on the call. Any update from the White House as far as the rapid tests, when those should start to be sent in the mail? And second topic, also, we've heard some organizations in Northwest Arkansas requesting assistance from the CDC to administer PCR tests and to give uh, people a break and help with that. Can you Have you heard of that? Can you provide more information? <clears throat> Uh, on, on the uh, first point, uh, uh, I've talked to the White House uh, regularly, uh, and uh, all indications are that the website is up. I've talked to a lot of people that have gone online. It's been a smooth uh, application process, putting in the address, uh, getting the information in, and then that should be delivered, I believe it is, within five days. And so we're not to that five days, so we'll see if the delivery takes place as indicated. Uh, but uh, so far it's uh, operated uh, smoothly, and I hope that will continue to be the case. Uh, on the second, on the PCR, Dr. Romero, why don't you take that one on? Thank you. Um, it, it, I think a clarification is necessary in that. So. Um, we were, that is the health department, was contacted by the CDC regarding a program called ICAT, I-C-A-T-T. -T. We can give you the, uh, the full name of that. Um, and offered uh, the ability to do a PCR testing. 
uh, they provided uh, uh, the personnel to do so, um, and we uh, took advantage of that. So we expanded our testing, um, and two sites are up. One is in northwest Arkansas, um, and you'll forgive me if I can't remember where the second one is. Uh, but we are taking advantage of every opportunity we have to either get more tests or provide tests that are available. Thank you. Anything else? Speaking of the online testing, um, this is Zoe Henry with Channel 5. Uh, I saw another state put out their own website. We have a federal website. Is there anything in the works for a Arkansas website for at-home tests? Uh, well, first of all, we do learn from uh, other states, and so we always watch to see if there's uh, better ideas. Uh, I like what we've done. You know, the system has been uh, very well received. We get it out across the state. Of course, if you, and so uh, I think that's worked most effectively. Obviously, you can go on the Department of Health website, and you can find the location that you can go pick it up. That makes a lot more sense to me than a website that uh, you put all the information in and we have to do the delivery. We have a very efficient system and uh, you know, we'll always look to ways to improve it, but I think what we have right now is, uh, works the best. Yes? How are we doing with the uh, supply of antivirals and other medications that we're supposed to be using uh, up front when we first get the disease? So what, how's that looking? Uh, it is a limited supply. The federal government controls the supply. We have requests in for more, uh, and uh, we hope that the supply will increase. Uh, that's a short version of the story. Uh, I was on a call with uh, uh, governors from multiple states across the country uh, this morning, and they all have the same issue. Uh, it is the difficulty of supply. The federal government controls that. Dr. Merrill, did you have anything to add on that? So there is a shortage. We do have some. We want more. How are they going to uh, shorten the shortage, I guess? Uh, what, what can we get them to do to, since they control it all, what, how can we push back and make them uh, increase the supply? Well, <laughs> realize the urgency of it, first of all. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, work with the states in the proper allocation of it. Uh, the federal government right now makes the decision as to where uh, those uh, therapeutics should go. And uh, so every state makes their own case. Uh, the federal government uses uh, their own data uh, determination as to where they should go. Uh, that's beyond that, you've got to ask and push uh, for the administration to uh, accelerate uh, that supply chain. Oh, well, the governors are regularly. And, you know, it, whenever a new therapeutic comes on the market, there is a shortage of supply. I mean, that's just the reality of our production. Uh, and so, uh, but we don't want to uh, slow it down. I know that for a while there were the monoclonal antibodies that uh, were not being delivered as they should have been to the states, and that's changed. So hopefully this will uh, change course as well. Uh, we got two questions at the table, then we'll call it a day. Yes. Well, so it uh, doesn't seem like the cases have peaked quite yet, but it sounds like you think they are going to do that relatively soon and start declining next week. Is that right? That's really the indication. And the encouraging word is what I received from some of the other governors across the country that uh, in the Northeast, the cases are on the decline. And, uh, and so uh, they were offering that word of encouragement. And then the fact that uh, we see some uh, age groups that are going down, uh, and we see in a couple days this week that our cases were not as high as the previous day in the week before. So there are those encouraging signs, but this is, uh, COVID has thrown so many curveballs at us, you don't get cocky about it. And uh, you wanna wait and see, but there are some hopeful indications that uh, over the course of the next week, we'll start seeing uh, a decline in that increase in cases every day. Yes. I've heard from a lot of parents and also seen online postings that a lot of schools are still having trouble, you know, getting masks to kids or getting masks in the right size to kids. Is there any way that that process is being made more efficient? Uh, I think Dr. 
Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Fever. So we um, followed up yesterday with our school districts, um, actually provided them with um, data on the most recent shipment that, ha that they should have all received. Um, they have their tracking number, the address, everything that they need if they have not received um, that most recent shipment of masks. Those were for um, kind of the medium to adult size masks. Um, the, the mask for the younger students should be uh, ready and should be going out very soon. So um, we're working with districts. Um, they have their federal funds, of course, that they can use um, to also supplement that. I think we continue to learn a lot. Um, through the course of um, dealing with COVID-19, and we're going to continue um, to to work to be prepared and help them be prepared. But um, if there are um, if parents are experiencing that, they should call their um, districts. But the um, as of yesterday, they should have that information to know exactly where that is. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention today, and we will uh, see you next week. And there's Governor Asa Hutchinson delivering uh, a briefing. Uh, regarding the coronavirus, and you see it right there on the screen, 13,000 new cases of um, the, the virus there in the last 24 hours. Uh, active cases uh, now have um, exceeded 100,000, uh, bringing us to a total of 101,141. That is a record here in Arkansas. Hospitalizations have increased by 18. Uh, which brings us to a total of 1,658 people in the hospital right now, which is a record. And 14 additional deaths have been recorded in the last, um, in this latest report, which brings us to a total of 9,400 um, uh, deaths ever since this uh, pandemic began and the state started tracking it. There were a couple of different notes uh, that I want to bring your attention to, and it's something that the Health Secretary Dr. Jose Romero said, and he said that it's very possible that the state is seeing a downward trend um, with uh, the Omicron variant, and he said that you have to look at the number of uh, total um, uh, cases or new cases with uh, uh, the, the, a certain age bracket, um, and it is your 20 year olds, uh, uh, 18 to uh, 34, I believe he said. And that is now starting to flatline and it has started to decrease ever so slightly. And it is very possible, according to Dr. Jose Romero, that we may be on the back end um, or, or, or just now starting to see the very beginning of this peak, but it's still. Um, raises a ton of questions uh, because there is still 100,000 active cases of COVID here in Arkansas, and it's very possible that um, the hospitalizations will continue to increase. So we will have much more on the coronavirus and um, the uh, effects um, uh, that hospitals continue to see um, here in the coming days and in the next report. But for now, uh, this has been a special report from CARE K4 and Fox 16. We'll have much more coming up on CARE K4 News at 4, Fox 16 News at 530. But until then, I'll see you at 4 o'clock on Channel 4. Have a good rest of your day.